Hey everybody, it's Nick Dolman here. And again, we're going to be talking about Power Pages. And today we're going to talk about external authentication providers for Power Pages, specifically Okta, which is a third party authentication provider. Now, a little primer on authentication. Of course, out of the box, we sign into Power Pages, we launch a site, and we can sign in with a local account, which is just basically um, straight up forms based authentication, storing that information directly in the contact record in Dataverse, not recommended for production scenarios. And of course, amongst the security concerns, there's also the management of password resets, setting up new users and that kind of thing. So what you'd want to use is an external authentication provider using tools that are meant for managing authentication, kind of that you know, that security at the doorman kind of thing. So we have Azure AD. Now, of course, we all know it's been renamed to Entra, but it's still showing up as Azure AD in Power Pages as of today. You can click on that if you have a local account on your, on your local tenant, or if you want to add other users like an HR application, you could use Azure AD, or if you wanted to onboard users as guest users. Now, of course, that adds a whole other pile of work so we wanna use like an external authentication provider. Now, Microsoft provides Azure AD B2C. There also is a coming the Entra for external providers as well. That's sort of the, the route that Microsoft sort of recommends or provides for you. But sometimes other organizations in a project I'm working on, they use Okta. They use Okta for a lot of their authentication needs. Okta is a well-known um, third-party authentication provider. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So first thing we need to do is actually get an Okta account. All right, so you just basically go to Okta.com. You have that splash screen here. Of course, there's uh, different things like a free trial, or if you're already using Okta, you can log into that account, of course, assuming you have credentials from your uh, organization for that. Uh, but if you're just starting out, you can try a free trial. And then once you get to that free trial page, what you wanna choose is the customer identity cloud. So you go into here, and you can try it out. You can basically start building. Of course, um, what this will allow you to do is to allow external users to log into your Power Pages site. So I just click on start, start building, and you're going to actually have to sign in with authentication provide like uh, either GitHub, Google, or just using your email to get your account set up. That's pretty straightforward. I already have an account set up, so what I'm going to do is log in. All right, so I've on, I'm in my, to my Okta dashboard now. And what I'm going to do is from here, I'm going to go into something called applications and I'm going to go into my list of applications here. You can see here, I've got a few other ones set up already. I'm going to basically create a brand new application. I'm going to give it a name and call it whatever you want. Um, probably something you'd be able to recognize. I'm just going to call it Power Pages Demo Video. And I can go and change that later if I want. And here I'm going to choose the application type and technology. Now we have a whole bunch of different options here. I'm just choosing ASP.NET ON. That to me is the closest match to what Power Pages is. And we'll hit just continue here. And basically we have a bunch of things here, but a bunch of information. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you specifically how we're gonna set this up for Power Pages. So immediately I'm gonna go to the settings. And here we have a bunch of settings, the name, domain, client ID, client secret. We can put a bit of a description here if I want. The application logo, I could put a path. We could set up a logo even in our Power Pages site, put the, the link here. I'm just gonna leave it for now. Regular web application. Pretty much we're gonna leave all the defaults. Now we are going to need to figure out that allowed callback URL. We're gonna to get to that in a minute. So we have a bunch of these options here. We're gonna to need to keep this tab open to the side because we are going to need to copy all of these values. So. Basically, what I want to do is I'm going to copy the domain, I'm going to copy the client ID, and I'm also going to copy the client secret. So I've got those three things lined up in my clipboard. Yes, I can copy multiple things if I'm using the Windows V key. Um, we're good here. We're just going to now pop over to our Power Pages site. All right, I'm in the Power Pages Design Studio. I'm assuming that you've already provisioned a Power Apps or <laughs> Power Pages website. Um, if you don't know how to do that, check some of my other videos or just follow the instructions of the docs. It's pretty straightforward. Um, what we're going to go into is the security workspace. Now, if you may have been working a setup before, they've now split it off to the security workspace, which is pretty cool. 
Um, this way we can manage all our security settings in one spot. Um, a few other things here, we got the run scan. What I'm gonna do is gonna go to identity providers. Now here we have that list of entity providers. Let's just make this a little bit bigger for you to see. And here we have a bunch. We have local sign-in, which is also enabled, the Azure AD, which is enabled. These two are enabled by default. We see we have Active Azure Active Directory B2C uh, set for configure. This is a very popular one. Um, of course, we could do Facebook, LinkedIn, Google, Twitter. I do believe there are issues with Twitter or now called X. Um, I would sort of avoid that one. I'm not sure why it's still here. And of course, we could just use the, the Microsoft authentication that you probably use for your Xbox and a few other things. However, we're setting up Okta, which is not listed here. So we're going to have to go here and create a new provider. And here we can go through and configure that identity provider. First off, it's going to give us some options here. I'm going to choose other. I'm going to choose the protocol as Open ID Connect. We do have some others here. So if you are configuring other external authentication providers, you do have a few other options here. For now, I'm going to leave it Open ID Connect and the provider name. I'm just going to call this Okta. So that way it appears we know what it is when we're configuring it. I'm just going to hit next. And here we have a whole bunch of information. Now, here's that reply URL. We're going to need that in a few minutes. But the authority, what we're going to do is paste in the domain name here. So if you recall, we captured a bunch of values from the Okta site. If you uh, forgot to do that, no worries. Just go back into your Okta dashboard and grab those values. So let's uh, go through and get those values in here. Now, one thing here when I'm pasting in that URL, it is going to want to make sure I put in an HTTPS. So put that in HTTPS. We are going to need this URL again in a few minutes. So just hang on to that. Of course, we put in the client ID and here's that redirect URL. Um, just keep an eye open on that. The metadata address here, this is actually um, going to be the domain authority of this one again. So let's just capture this one again and paste that in directly. But we're going to have to add something to the end. Remember, again, you're going to need that HTTPS, but we're going to have to add in here. And it even gives you the little hint of the well known open ID configuration. So let's add that in. Okay, we've added that. We're going to leave our scope as open ID, a response type. We'll just, uh, I flipped it over to code. Um, and then the client secret, again, there's that client secret value that we captured from the dashboard, which is that big long string here. And yes, I'm pasting here. You can see this on the video. I'm going to be deleting this app after I record the video. So anyways, we're good here. Now, what we need to do is capture up again that reply URL. So I'm going to copy that because we're going to need that. It's linked copy to the clipboard. Um, and we can leave all the other settings. We can configure a few other things about redirects on logout and a few other things. But for now, I'm just going to hit confirm and we're going to see these values here. So we have um, our redirect URL. Now you'll do notice that it just showed the sign in dash open ID underscore two. You will, if you've configured, um, I configured Okta earlier on this, so it's going to increment. So you can actually have multiple. This kind of plays into a little bit with ALM. Um, what's going to happen is if you do can move this configuration over using uh, solutions, it is going to appear in your target or your downstream environment as a managed change. You're not going to be able to make a change there uh, because it is managed. So you're going to have to add for now anyway, uh, change your site settings by adding it manually. That's a whole other conversation, but just be aware there's some ALM implications here. You'll need to configure your downstream environments. Anyways, we've got that uh, link here. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that back to our Okta settings in the Okta dashboard. Let's go do that. All right, so I'm back here into my Okta dashboard. I'm going to scroll down here and then here we have the application login URI, but here I'm going to call the allowed callbacks. Uh, remember, we captured that earlier. It is that readyxrm demo here, sign in dash two um, as allowed callback URLs. Um, again, there are a whole bunch of other settings here. I'll leave that to you to explore and experiment. For now, I'm just showing the basics so we can get this going. I'm going to hit save changes. Um, it's a may take up to 30 seconds. That's all well and good. We've made these changes now. Now let's go back and try out our Power Pages website and try to log in with Okta. All right, so we're here. I'm going to hit close. And now we see we have Okta as enabled here. 
what I'm going to do, just go back up to the home page and let's uh, hit preview. All right, I'm actually in my Power Pages site. Let's hit the sign in button. And now we see alongside Azure AD, we now have this Okta option as well. So let's click on this. All right, we're going to be presented with the Okta sign in. Of course, we can configure this, make it look a little bit more on brand. Again, this is just the settings. I'm going to sign in with an account that I set up earlier. So I've got that signed in here. Let's just hit continue. Now, if this is the first time I'm signing into my Power Pages site, by default, it's going to ask for the email address. So it's going to be able to match, either match up to an existing contact or create a new one. So I'm going to put in my email address here and I'll hit register. And then of course, immediately it's going to take us to our, by default, take us to the profile page. So again, I can begin to fill in um, all this information. So I've filled in the basics and I'm just going to hit update here. And I've now signed into my Power Pages website, the same as if I would. So now I'm authenticated. Of course, as an administrator, I can go in and assign specific web roles, give certain uh, permissions, side tied to that, tied to table permissions, pay permissions, and basically provide access to the site, but through that Okta. Um, and basically sign out is just pretty much the same as always. I'm now signed out and it takes me and I can go back and sign in again. Now I'm back here in the design studio. One more thing I wanted to show you, if I'm going into the security section again, and let's look at the identity providers. If we now want to make Okta the default, we don't want the other ones. Of course, what we can easily do is just disable the local sign in, which you should be doing in a production site anyway. We could also disable Active Directory if you really want. Um, and though those are disabled, the other thing we can do is now make this the default. So this will basically mean it's going to be automatically redirected to Okta. So we've done this. Let's go back and let's take a look and see how this looks. Preview. All right, so I'm on my home page again. What I'm going to do is now hit the sign in button. And notice this time it took me directly to the Okta login. So if I've already been signed in with Okta for maybe some other applications, and this is very typical of a, if an organization is using Okta for multiple things, this would have taken me directly into my Power Pages site. So if I'm just going to again choose my uh, login credentials and then just hit continue, I'm just signed in automatically. I didn't go to the profile because I already set that earlier. Didn't ask me for the email address because I had linked that up earlier. So this is pretty amazing. If you're using Okta, as you can see, the basics are very easy to sign up. Of course, there's a lot of other configuration that can be done in terms of mapping values, redirects, uh, where it all lands. The other thing you can do too, if you already have existing Okta users, and uh, I'll make a video about this maybe in the future, but you could actually go and create records in the external identity provider table with those Okta IDs. So your users don't even need to go through that registration process. They'll be able to go directly into your brand new Power Pages site. I hope you found this video helpful and please, if there's any questions or comments, put them below. Thanks.